Hello everyone, thank you so much for keeping a date here with Joy Asoye here on Joy Asoye Live. It's wonderful to know you are right there uh, waiting for, for this program to begin. Today's edition is really interesting, especially because we'll be talking about the earlier announcement by the Nigeria Labour Congress that declared another two-day warning strike beginning on Tuesday, 5th of September in protest against the federal government's failure to address challenges caused by the removal of subsidy. The NLC president, Joe Ajero, made the declaration earlier today in a press conference at the Labour House in Abuja while speaking on resolutions by the, na the NLC National Executive Committee meeting. Labour Union, the Labour Union rather, is accusing the federal government of abandoning the negotiations and failing to implement some of the resolutions from previous meetings with the government. Are they justified to threaten another strike? Are they not giving this government the benefit of doubt enough to ensure that what they had promised would, keep in, uh, would be implemented, especially as the government has just inaugurated their new ministers, the new cabinet? Well, we have in the studio Ambassador Musa Mohammed Token, National President, APC Initiative for Good Governance. He's also the Presidential Campaign Council Coordinator of Taraba State Directorate of, of Northern East, Northeast Grassroots Engagement and Orientation. Uh, he's also the Northeast Coordinator at Siwaju Shetima Coalition for Good Governance, Northeast Coordinator, Good Governance Ambassador of Nigeria, Deputy President General, President General rather, of the North Coalition of All APC Support Groups in Nigeria. He has such a huge uh, portfolio, one that makes him an APC chieftain. Thank you so much for being part of the program. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's wonderful. But let's go for a short break to return to discuss more. Remember, we're talking about the NLC threatened strike and the composition of the president's cabinet. Are we forced to move forward? Is this not a step backward? We'll be right back after this. Welcome back from that. Like I said earlier, we have Ambassador Musa Muhammad Token in the studio with us to discuss this NLC threat of another strike action. And if Nigerians are indeed giving uh, uh, the president, President Bola Tinubu, the benefit of doubt. Thank you again for coming, Ambassador Token. You're welcome. Thank you. Now let's go to the crux of the matter. Mm. The NLC seems to have given this government a long rope, as some people would call it. In fact, some people even think the NLC has is soft on the uh, Tinubu administration. But what's your take, especially with the news of this strike action that threatens to, uh, you know, crush down economic activities in the country? Well, uh, you know, this government has just taken the order of the day recently and um, I think um, justice should be done to the government of the day because uh, this is just the beginning there are so many uh, you know issues to address and uh, at the beginning of affairs of the government there are several strategies plans actions that are supposed to be coordinated well organized in order to further the uh, you know what is going to bring about uh, you know progressive change in the life of a common man so there are a lot of things that is on ground for the government to you know push ahead for the benefits of the masses so uh, seeing that uh, the time frame is too short for government to be able to carry out all that is needed at this particular point you know so uh, it's a kind of uh, stages everything is in stages and uh, the steps that have been taken so far the appointment of the sgf the appointment of the minister these are some you know uh, background that is going to give the, gov uh, the government consolidated you know ideologies and principles 
that is going to galvanize to give the government what it takes to rule the country. So this uh, issue of strike, I think uh, there should be more space and time to the government to do the needful while the citizens are also encouraged to be steadfast. On the 2nd of August, uh, the NLC w protested uh, what it described as the anti-party policies of this administration. And uh, in, that, in that protest, we had the TUC, that, um, the Trade Union Congress. We had several affiliate unions also coming to demonstrate that. We mm -hmm. had thought that after that, I know that uh, just before that second, on the, the president had a nationwide uh, um, broadcast where he told Nigerians all he had to do almost in all sectors of the economy. But those things that were promised have not been implemented. You're here saying that Nigerians should give the president uh, some time since he just inaugurated uh, this cabinet. However, do you think Nigerians have been uh, patient enough and something could be done and done fast, especially because of the harrowing experiences Nigerians are facing at the moment? Well, uh, hence everything in life is in stages and process. There is time virtually for everything and the needful will be done at an appropriate time the government didn't fold her hands watching things unfold but this government has promised a food a, a, um, a state of emergency on food insecurity and we thought fast 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 things were going to be done he has promised alleviation and he has promised so much but yet it doesn't seem like we have seen anything out of that so like you said what should Nigerians be feeding on in the moment? Well, uh, as I, I, I earlier said, the priority of uh, this government is to see that uh, people get the needful that is going to give them the best in their daily activities. You know, issue of uh, security is very challenging and uh, the most you know perfect area to which to deal with security is food that is uh, the stomach project and um, you can see palettes have been uh, already been you know mm. uh, given to the governors in order to ameliorate the suffering of the of people due to uh, the hardship that people that are, facing. are facing but do you think that cash palliative plan is one that one should uh, applaud especially seeing how it is uh, is it going to make an, any impact whatsoever definitely is going to make an impact a positive impact for that matter but what we are trying to encourage uh, most especially the um, uh, state executive council and uh, their in, uh, counterparts is to do the needful and also to make sure that uh, fair judgment is given uh, uh, during sharing of these palliatives so that it will reach the people the targeted people the common man who uh, make uh, find it very difficult to you know uh, make things you know get to his stomach so uh, on that we, we are advising that um, all necessary steps and measures should be taken towards ensuring that uh, the right full people are given the palliatives. So if that is done, it is going to create a very positive impact in the life of a common man. Earlier today, I don't know if you stumbled on that news article, the Minister of uh, Poverty Alleviation and Humanitarian Management uh, also announced that uh, the government has earmarked 15 million homes uh, which is supposed to be the poor of the poor the poorest of, of them all mm. or the poorest of the poor mm. as i've heard a lot of people call it although i find that very funny 15 million <laughs> homes however if are we still going by the five eight thousand naira that's going to be disbursed and you have said that it will make an impact economically mm -hmm. that is why nigerians have not trusted successive government do you think this would bring uh, pr president tinubu in good light 
well this thing is uh, is done in order to ameliorate the suffering of the people would eight thousand actually um, ameliorate not, the suffering not, of anybody not only eight thousand there are other measures that has been put in place to see that uh, the masses you know get it right and that will be fully you know done as the process is on uh, on, on, on on going to see that uh, the cabinet the executive uh, you know uh, are fully arms and uh, they take off properly and fully then at that period when everything is properly put in place and they have properly taken off fully uh, some of these measures will be seen you know uh, uh, you know playing fully okay so the nlc is deciding to go on strike there's no strike action anywhere that benefits government or benefits anybody really because mm -hmm. when you stifle economic activities of course it affects productivity mm -hmm. now what do you suggest that the government of Tinubu should do because what they have said is the reason for this strike is indeed legitimate but so what would your suggestion be well uh our measures have already been taken by the government to ameliorate uh the suffering of the masses i'm talking to to stop the strike action yes that is what i'm saying in the side of the uh nlc i think um just as you said this strike action most of times uh, only aggravates the the suffering of the masses so if actually this uh, strike is done in order to benefit the masses i think enough time should be given where the government will do the needful to see that uh, the masses uh, you know uh, their the suffering is being taken into you know consideration and the needful is done for their own benefits but the strike action to be candid at this point in time is not advisable they should give enough time for government to do the needful so how can government explain this to nlc because they've had to several meetings it doesn't seem fruitful and mm. you must admit that this nlc leadership has been really uh, very uh, accommodating i think mm. that's the word to use they have listened to the government they have given government i remember initially when they were had their inaugural meeting with the president a lot of nigerians were skeptical this is the nlc telling nigerians to give this president um the, the space the opportunity to to deliver on his mandate but it seems that relationship is going sour so consideration should also be given to the fact that uh, one thing led to another and um, uh, uh, definitely uh, it is going to affect one part of uh, you know another section mm. just to take for instance um, on this well this is on process uh, uh, Niger went on uh, you know uh, to overthrow the, the electro, uh, elected democratic uh, you know uh, president and that uh, has gone a long way to also you know affect the whole system hence the president is the uh, you know the chairman uh, i mean the, the head of ECOWAS uh, so b b by that you know there are other uh, engagement that will actually delay the process because what actually affects Niger will go a long way to also affect Nigeria in what in what way we are neighboring Okay. We are neighbors, Nigeria and Cameroon are neighbors. Let's just talk, a uh, for instance, we have more than, f uh, you know, six uh, northern states that are bordering Niger. Exactly. So whatsoever happened in Niger will directly Affect, or uh, indirectly, indirectly affect, affect Nigerians. That's true. So that fear and other serious engagement that the president... Affected our economic development? Yeah, definitely. In what Do, way? Don't you know that when even the war in Ukraine is affecting the world war? Globally. Yes, globally. I, 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 so, uh, in that, Nigeria and Cameroon, I mean, uh, and uh, Niger, are uh, sisters and our brothers and sisters. So, whatsoever affects Nigeria will directly affect Niger. And so, also, 
whatsoever affect Niger would directly or indirectly so affect it affected the our, economic our, our, activities. Our policy implementation. I know that uh, product and services that usually uh, that usually go in and out of the country is stifled at the moment. I also understand that mm. a lot of people's businesses may be affected. But yeah. we are talking in uh, homegrown problems. We right are talking now. about economics, and you say the ag economic activities will be affected. It is. If it the economic activities is affected, it affects the policy as well. Because all these things are in processes, mm. and one process may affect the other one, and the implementation of one we just will be jeopardized. Like a ripple effect. So that is it. So it's just like when you you bring out your uh, your your crops, or let me say your farm products. Mm. Let me take for instance of maize to dry it, and now all of a sudden there is cloud, and the next thing is rain. You have to pack it aside. And wait for the rain to, yeah. you know, uh, subside all this, before all you all continue. This, uh, amb ambass ambassador Token, mm. all yeah. this is this attendant effect we are facing mm. is because of that single proclamation of the removal of fuel subsidy, yeah. the end of the fuel subsidy regime. Yeah. Mm. Is it possible that this government may reconsider, maybe put it several things in place mm. before? Uh, going back again, can can this government maybe reconsider and, and go back on their word and maybe uh, uh, bring back <laughs> the fuel subsidy? You you know look at looking at the dynamic uh, dynamism of uh, Aswaju Bola Ametinibu and the fact that uh, he's he has a kind of listening ears. You know he is not somebody who is very stiff or very stagnant when it comes to some certain decision when the, uh, anything that is of progressive changes is it been you know put before his table and uh, he have his team now that uh, the national executive council is you know about to be fully uh, you know or let me say it's already fully on uh, on mm -hmm. ground mm -hmm. uh, it when it is presented and the yearnings and aspirations of people are being channeled to him and he see the need for that i think there is is not a closed door you know decision so he has his listening ears and he's a kind of pragmatic leader that uh you know make things happen so and what the priority of uh, this government is to see that uh uh you know good and services is being rendered fully to the grassroots level so going by that, if there is need for such consideration, I think adequate measures will be taken to see that uh, that is addressed. Okay. Mm. Well, while this um, uh, um, address, Nigerians are waiting, because mm. I don't know where you buy fuel. <laughs> Some of you who are APC chieftains mm. who worked for the party uh, and, and to the success of the party, I often ask the question, mm. is this... Uh, is this this attendant effect, this um, crushing economy affecting the likes of you, because you still <laughs> come here and you support the policies of mm -hmm. this government. We had thought that um, when fuel subsidy is removed, mm -hmm. we understood the corruption that, that, that uh, clouded the whole mm -hmm. fuel subsidy regime. We thought we would see a, a very quick action. Mm -hmm. The monies that were saved from fuel subsidy removal could have been put infused back into the system and infused quickly because Nigerians are suffering. You also remember Kenya. Kenya tried it. Nigerians protest. Uh, Kenyans rather protested, and the president there overturned that decision, giving them another one month and ensuring these certain things are in place. But how are you personally managing this period of 620 naira per liter? You know, actually, it has not been easy. For, for you every, as well? Everybody. This is a kind of Ambassador, national... Ambassador, I cannot agree. <laughs> this is a kind of national sacrifices. And uh, which we think, and we are appealing, that uh, for this period of uh, hardship, all people should be steadfast and turn on to God and pray, pray, and pray so that uh, we'll get things right. In spite of the fact that government have taken adequate measures to see that uh, these uh, issues are being liberated, but then there is need for people to 
also ensure that uh, the uh, you know abstain from what will you know call for the uh, a, a grievance of their creator. Mm. People should abstain from doing things that are contrary to the injunction of uh, their deems. So by doing that, uh, uh, God is also going to intervene and the whole system is going to, you know, uh, terminate at a point. So we have to exercise a high level of, uh, you know, uh, steadfastness as well as try to abstain from the negative activities we have been, you know, engaging in. Which, which, we should which turn are out what? To God. Which, which <laughs> what are these negative activities we've been engaging well, in? That you know, uh, people have to do away with things that, uh, like, uh, uh, there are a lot of things that uh, is happening in this country. You know, people have no sense of humanity in them. Killing of people, exactly. You know, is going on. Kidnapping, all these things. But these are the things you people campaign that you your um, the Asiwaji was coming to ensure would stop. Nigerians were no longer going to yes, be kidnapped yes. any longer. The yes. youth were supposed to be employed. I remember in his blueprint, he even mm -hmm. had um, what he called. I can't remember what he called it, where young people would be employed, especially. Mm -hmm. Uh, to assist the security architecture just so that there was security in the in the country so how market <laughs> you know as i said uh development is a process and this process is in stages and uh, it cannot be fully achieved within just one period of time right it is in stages Hence, it is in stages there is need for people to understand that and also participate to in add value stage. to the system to see that what is required is fully achieved. When they say government, people has a kind of, have a kind of misconception. You understand? So, a government, when they will talk about government, you are government, I am government, mm -hmm. and uh, we are all part of the world system is not something that uh, we are going to leave everything and fold our hand and say government should do this government should do that we are also part of the government exactly so it's all inclusive stages exactly. or steps that must have to be taken in order to change the scenario okay so yeah. that uh, last month when mm -hmm. the nlc uh, went on that uh, strike action mm -hmm or protest rather mm. they also asked for a review an upward review of the minimum wage to as much as 200,000 naira uh, mm. for the minimum wage is it something that's achievable you know, well, even uh, as time unfolds I'm believing that uh, Asiwaju will even do more than that mm. the the salary you know stage will be increased tremendously in the, in, in the manner that uh, it will be able to sustain uh, uh, the people adequately. So that is not something that is not going to be, you know, possible. It's very possible. Right. As time unfolds, I'm um, believing me, you, uh, as what you is going to do the need for. Um, for how long are we supposed to have this confidence? But we should have to consider the time because frame. Because it seems like this well, government is just too to three months the government yeah, it's just starting it's almost 100 so days in, in office almost not up to yes but this but is a system to which if you remember some many years ago mm. during the time of pd pdp mm. they have wrong so many things now nigerians uh, are asking for those times back because when you go to the market and a mudu of rice is so expensive you are like oh, where is pdp <laughs> <laughs> but you also have to consider like if you go to some of this, um, uh, uh, like uh, in Borno State, Yobe State, and part of uh, Katina and other areas, there are places that we are not accessible. But now you can go there. Mm. You can go there. You can do your business. Thanks to the APC administration. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, as I earlier said, it's something that is in stages. Mm. As time unfolds, things are going to change perfectly, and uh, Nigeria. Are we will have the right. 
Okay. But this is a time of sacrifice. Right. This is a time of uh, national sacrifice. And uh, we are calling on all Nigerians to be steadfast. We sacrifice. know the challenges. The challenges is so huge. Exactly. We I'm happy you admitted that. Much. Yeah, yeah, that is, is, is very true. And even this happens even in the time of prophets of God. It's not, it's not like a, a man, a man administration that calls this sometimes out of you know our activities our human activities if we you know step aside far from god sometimes some of these things are bound so to this is spiritual punishment <laughs> <laughs> ambassador will go for a short no. break right now <laughs> i didn't say that anyway <laughs> we'll go for a short break right now and return to discuss more we're still discussing the nlc uh, strike action that has just been threatened uh, that uh, they, they have threatened to embark on. But this new cabinet that the president has composed and inaugurated, are they charged? Are they ready? And would also explore the fact that APC members had worked so hard for the political party. Are they compensated right? Are they happy? Is this the end of the APC with all the uh, discordant tones we've heard? We'll be right back. Welcome back from that break. Now, while the NLC is threatening to go on strike, uh, Nigerians not sure whether to trust the president or not. There's also questions within the APC. The president has been making some appointments, has also appointed and inaugurated his ministers. However, there were some who thought they had worked really hard and have the capacity to be appointed in various positions. Some have found the appointments given to them too demeaning for their persons. Some believe that um, the square pegs are not being put in, uh, in square square Hole. holes rather, mm. are being put in square holes rather, and there's been several discordant tones. My guest ambassador Musa Muhammad Token, the National President APC Initiative for Good Governance is right here with us and he would be telling us how the APC PC members such as himself is faring. Welcome again. Thank you so much for being with us. I've enjoyed the conversation so far, but yeah. let's move a little mm. to the APC. The discordant tones. People are not happy. They spent resources and mm. their time to ensure that mm. uh, this president is installed. Mm. What's going on there? Well, in as much as uh, we, we are appealing to the citizenry to be steadfast. I think uh, the same tone I'm going to use to some of us that have labored so much to see that uh, we bring this uh, government on seat. Uh, the issue is that uh, what we want is delivery of services to the people. And uh, to me, uh, all the appointments made so far, I'm okay with it. This is the fact that, like uh, in APC Initiative for Good Governance, we have over 20 professors. We have senior advocates of Nigeria. We have former governors, former chairmen, of uh, council chairmen, former senators, and what have you. We have essential people that are credible enough to pilot the affairs of uh, the government of the day. Mm. But yet, uh, we are not yet been fully engaged. But there are still opportunities. But were these people, were these people really active in p pushing the Tinubu Shetima agenda? Seriously, we have people like uh, uh, Professor Osumbo, we have Balanglari, we have Professor uh, Ahmed Ashuku, we have so many professors and uh, so many APC so uh, st stakeholders so right. and uh, technocrats and all that are needed to, uh, you know, co uh, fully contribute to this, this administration, they are there. But as I said, I see nothing wrong in the appointments. So far. There are still several. enough time. Mm. And there are still several other 
you just mentioned you just mentioned okay for instance the mm. ex, uh, um, former governors within your 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 support group yeah would those ones the, the other appointments that are there mds and yes uh, there are mds uh, there are chairman wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be demeaning would it fit their class no you see because what we are talking about like is a contribution is for us to to add value to the to government we mm. want as well your government to succeed of course the promises APC have made so far, we want to make sh ensure that uh, these promises are made available to common men. So, uh, going by that, it's not issue of demeaning or belittling a position. Mm. But if you actually have, you know, a value to add to the system, you not look down on that. It's service to the nation. It's a service to the nation. And there are some, you know, agencies that uh, are so large, just like a ministry. If you are there, you will be able to contribute immensely mm. to the development of uh, this but country. But would it be juicy enough? Because, no, it's because sometimes it's not about the service that is there. We've seen you politicians <laughs> so far. <laughs> when, when you're campaigning, you talk about service, you talk about how humility, yeah. you talk about how important you know, the you citizens you are. Know, um, but would it be juicy, which is what the whole lobbying seems to be about? You see, let me tell you one thing that I believe that this, uh, the, 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 this government is elected to serve for four years. And after these four years, there is a still another four years. Exactly. Inshallah, we are going to be voted back again. So, I'm assuring you that uh, within these four years, some of uh, people that are ministers today may not be there. An order will come in. So, it's all about being steadfast. Yeah, well, well, the others, are they not going to be the ones who would ensure and work for the government in the next four years? Is it is it going what, to be what a, what is it compensation from from 2022 that would trickle again down to 2027? What I'm trying to say in essence is this: it will reach everybody. It will reach everybody, inshallah. With the course of time, mm. it will reach everybody. So, but what's the party doing to ensure that, like you have said, everybody mm. is steadfast and mm. just believe in the process? Because it's one thing to expect Nigerians to have patience, to believe in President mm. Buhari's uh, Tinubu rather, <laughs> President Tinubu's plans and and mm. and, and uh, programs. But it's another thing for the party itself to mm. understand that it 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 will reach everyone. Well, it's just all matter of time. It's matter of time. People should be steadfast. We have a lot of things to do in order to ensure that we contribute our what uh, our quarters to the development of this country. Mm. We must have to do things extraordinary to see that uh, we contribute immensely for the development of this country. There are other people that have the resources within their disposals, so there is need for them to reach out to the masses, mm. to reach out to the needful. At this point, At it's this not point an election time, point. No, a, a, a it's, not, it's, it's not when it is election time that you have to do the needful. Mm. So we Everybody have resources. responsibilities. Ambassador, As we do the now. resources now. now. Because very often we don't hear about political parties until when it's close to elections. And mm. you're saying that there's still more no, we, we actually, we, we actually, uh, the issue of governance... It's not all about um, uh, when you are in, in a, you are holding the political position. You know, position. Of course, definitely. If you have the means, mm. you have the power within your disposition mm. to assist people, to encourage people, to employ people. Go ahead and do that. Government is is kind of all inclusive activities that encompasses orders outside the governing council to do the needful in order to see that uh, the government promises is fully achieved right so even other private sectors can, can come in come to board. contribute mm. uh, most especially I'm at this you particular a time question <laughs> ambassador you hold <laughs> several positions no, within several support groups yeah. for especially mm. this this wow. administration yeah and i'm saying that having done so much during mm. elections yeah. used your resources your yeah. time your connections and all of that 
to mm. ensure that your party wins, mm. are you still willing to use your resources for this engagement with community that you talk about? You, you who see, will fund it and to what gain, really? You see, we are advocates of good governance. Right. And in as such, if you find your, yourself in such position, you have a lot of uh, you know responsibility to, to carry out. It goes a long way for you to, you know, talk to people on individual basis, talk to companies, talk to organizations, to reach out to the people that are in need. You understand? So we talk not only to the government of the day, but we talk to our partners in progress. Those who actually, even if you give them position today, they will not take. But they have their own ways. They have their own means to contribute to see that uh, the, 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 the promises come to fruition. So well, you, you, you talk about good governance, but yeah. you are also of a political party. So yeah. are you able to look your presidential, your president at the mm. moment to say this policy is wrong? Wouldn't that be seen as anti-party? Like we've seen, it's like when you're a part of a political mm. party, mm. no matter how much vision you have mm. or where if whether or not the president or the powers that be in all stratas i'm talking mm. local government state and all of that mm. deviate from the blueprint or, or the the ideology of the party mm. nobody from the party says anything you politicians come to support everything that your pa <laughs> your party does mm. but you say you are for good governance so yeah. are you really would you look the president in the eye to say this policy Please reverse it. It does not fit. It does not serve the people. Is that what you can do? You asked me a direct question here. You asked ab about the increment in the salary scale of uh, uh, the, the government workers, mm -hmm. which you said uh, uh, NLC was NLC asking NLC for. Was asking for. I say the government can do even more than that. You know, in this, am I not saying something? Well, you've not gone against the government <laughs> has not said they won't do that. So at this point, I do not agree, Ambassador, that you've gone against what no. your president is doing. But no, I'm asking, can you look the president in the eye in a staircase conversation or however you meet to say, President, sir, yeah. this particular policy does not to fit the interest of Nigerians? Yes, I will say that if where I see the, there is lacuna, I will come in to, 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 to tell the president, I, I can even come out in the media and say, you know, there's something that Mr. President says, if you didn't forget. He said, if you have a contrary opinion that is even better than his own, he will succumb to your own, you know, suggestion. He's not a kind of president that uh, don't have a kind of listening ears. Okay. He's listening. So, so far, yeah. with, the, with the policies he's enacted, mm. is there one that you believe does not fit the interest of Nigerians? There is no any policy on ground mm -hmm. that is, did not fit the interests of Nigeria. So far, he's been on point. He's putting the round peg in the yeah. round square. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? But the issue now is that there are challenges. There are challenges, both external challenges and internal challenges. And sometimes, those as I, I'm, I'm asking for people that have the same ideology with us to cooperate and add value to this government where pro uh, necessary there are other people who still also want to see that uh, they, they are a kind of cox in the wheel of progress you understand it's I almost understand. almost but almost you should like expect that. that in the democracy it's not mm -hmm. everybody that accepts what you're saying so the there will be discordant to it's not the issue of acceptance mm. there are people who are trying to truncate the the you know the the the, the, the nascent democratic the processes mm -hmm. you understand so uh, 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 this type of people are not you know doing good for the they're not doing justice and good for the and nation you know that sometimes even the masses are also problem to their own problem how is that yes like uh, if you go to the market now, you find out that the price of uh, a mood of maize is about a thousand. So, okay. is, is, is there is there any subsidy removal in the price of uh, the, 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 the maize? The Why the aug uh, augmentation 
of the prices. The logistics for it. No, the logistics, if you see some of this, uh, uh, like, um, it's not every, you know, uh, masses have, if you, uh, if you can be rated in that category of people who cannot be able to, you know, feed themselves twice or three times in the day, I don't think uh, that people have the, you know, the capacity to purchase vehicle that they will, they, 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 will, they will fall it. Do you understand what I'm saying? All what is needed for, uh, for a, 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 a poor mass or a, a masses is to pay for his transportation. But uh, government are doing a lot of other, you know, policies. Right. In order to ameliorate some of these sufferings. Like what policy that has is in place right now that would ameliorate, that would give Nigerians that faith that having done this, we are confident more is to come. There is this uh, program that is on is on, is on, is on board. Uh, I've forgotten precisely, but on June, you know, about 1.9 trillion Naira has been uh, is sourced by the government as revenue. And out of that 1.9 trillion, about nine, about a trillion, that's 950 billion Naira mm. was reinvested uh, and divested to the states in order to ensure that they carry out some programs that would be that, that have, would have direct impact in the life of a common man. So all these policies are what is put in place to see that uh, the masses feel the direct impact of this administration, most especially to ameliorate the hardship a common man mm. is facing. But as I said, you know that some people would deliberately go and purchase a bag of uh, maybe a maize at 20,000 and pack them, millions of them, and bring it out at this time to sell it 60,000 uh, 60, per bag. Is that a new practice? It's something that has always it's been. It's not a new practice, but at this it's point business, in time... Really. You, hold, you hold on when it, there is plenty and business. sell when there is scarcity but to it's make business, more money. But when you are taking this business to your own advantage for the suffering of the masses, it's not good. Really? Yeah. How about you have to think it? about let's, it? Let's, 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 let's Let us that. do something that is going to promote a kind of uh, good governance we are talking about. Good yeah, governance is not all about government. Exactly. It's, but for me and you to do the needful. You purchase something, just you want to ensure that the price hits up to, uh, you know, uh, you, you double or triple, or you, 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 you want to end. Mm a very big or huge amount of Profit. money just at the deterrence of a common man it still behoves and you call it, it still, ambassador it it's, still it's unfair. behoves on the government for price regulations mm -hmm. you know when a businessman factors in the logistics of taking his product or service to a certain place mm -hmm. you can no longer complain but it still behoves on mm -hmm. government to ensure institutions that should work and ensure prices and quality of commodities and services is top notch in the country. And we we'll do that, but we're that, not seeing that. That happen. will not so be you done. Can, you can all at the, at the same time. That is why I told you that government is a process and a gradual one for that matter. But all that is to ensure is to see that the poor masses is secure, mm. and, and that comes grief. about the food security you know, uh, as well as your bola Tinubu is talking about. How about the security that's also affecting farmers and, and uh, people who would want to cultivate? We've heard dire reports of the productivity and farming really stalled in some parts of the country. So what is being done to ensure that that is not our our uh, experience so far because that also is part of the reason we are seeing the scarcity I I would also like to ask as you answer this question some people are also asking that borders should be open rice should be allowed to be imported freely just so that there's that competition that rice and other grains of course mm -hmm. that will not bring about the scarcity and the, the hike in the price of some of this stable food that Nigerians can not do without Yes, for me, personally, I have, I have no objection to that. Because 
if there is enough food in the country where you know uh, other people can be able to import now the market price will determine where to go for so if border is open just to allow a substantial you know uh, uh, rates to which food will go around the country at this particular point in time i think uh, it's not something that is bad mm. yeah your it's president good right your president has constantly says he, he he has an open door policy yeah but are you able to still reach i mean the political party members like you who have who are for good governance and want mm. the best for nigeria yeah. are you able to reach out or you've not found any need to do so so far uh, there are a lot of things uh, on the table of the uh, Mr. President and uh, all the, the government That's apparatus true. at the moment. There are things that have already been, uh, you know, submitted before his table. Uh, like uh, I'm also, as I said in my introduction, I'm the Northeast Zonal Coordinator of uh, Asiwa Jutinibu Shetima Coalition for Good Governance. We have. Uh, uh, so the level of uh, committees of think tanks. Right. These think tanks committees are of different technocrats from different disciplines. And we come out with a blueprint, a very gigantic book that encompasses strat uh, strategic action plans. Strategic, different from the blueprints the president had released? Oh, you know, you are asking about whether we have something uh, yeah, that uh, we uh, present. Can, right. uh, it it could not be uh, different, but you know, there it are aligns. several ways of uh, you know approaching uh, issues. Right. It, it's not that uh, we are bringing something that is contrary or is trying to combat okay. what uh, the blueprint is there on the ground. But we also have some, you know, issue that is presentable that maybe one or two things can be borrowed and do it and be done in a different way or in the more you know uh encompasses effective way? Uh, effect uh, effective and more efficient way mm. you know so we have such uh, you know uh, documents right and your and your group has the structure i mean grassroots from top to bottom or top yes bottom yes top. of course like uh, in APC Initiative for Good Governance, this uh, APC Initiative for Good Governance, and is a coalition of other support groups. Just like Aswaji Tinubu Shetima Coalition for Good Governance, we have 1,141 support groups duly registered. Uh, not people, though. These are groups. Good, these are groups. And this, each of these groups have more than, some have over 50,000 members. Some have even over 100,000 members. And all these have come together to support this administration, to bring it on board. And we are still working to ensure that all policies and programs, strategic action plan of the government of the day mm. is fully come to fruition, is fully executed. So we have uh, resource persons right. on ground that are very willing and ready to carry out or to contribute in the whole process. Okay, Ambassador Musa um, Musa Muhammad Token, a national president, APC Initiative for Good Governance, is the president, and <laughs> your 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 citation is long. <laughs> I might not have to go through all of that, but so. Thank you so much for being part of the program. You're welcome. Yes, it was wonderful having to hear what you're doing mm -hmm. for the nation and your support for the president. But this is where we close uh, this edition of Joy Asoye Live. And um, just like the rest of you, I plan to have a good rest this weekend. We'll be back next week. So do have a wonderful, wonderful Friday. <laughs>